For this module, we uh, are going to take a look at vectors again, and this time uh, look at multiplication by a scalar and subtraction. So in the last module, we were looking at uh, vectors, their uh, characteristic was that they had a magnitude, magnitude, and direction. And that was in contrast to a scalar, which could be represented by just a magnitude. So now we want to look at the case where we have a scalar multiplying by a vector and what does that give us? I want to consider this in a couple different cases. So in the first case, we want to look at where our scalar is greater than zero. In this case, you multiply, multiply the magnitudes. And the direction stays the same. Direction same. So in the case where c is uh, positive, you just multiply the two magnitudes together and the direction uh, is constant. In the case where c, the, the scalar, is equal to negative 1, in this case the magnitude is the same. Magnitude is the same. And the direction switches. So when the scalar is negative 1, the magnitude uh, is the same as before, but it now points in the opposite direction. Before we go further, let's take a look at these two uh, examples. The first, where we have uh, c uh, greater than 0, or c is positive. So, if I have a vector now, let's take a look at here, this is vector a, and now if I want to look at vector 2a, multiplying it by the scalar 2, I have a vector that is now twice as long, pointing in exactly the same direction. So if we were to look at uh, sort of numbers, if my vector a says, for example, is 5.2 meters uh, up, if I want to look at uh, 7a, then that's going to be uh, 7 times 5.2 meters up. So I just multiply the two magnitudes of the uh, scalar and the magnitude of the vector together, and the direction stays the same, 36.4 meters up. Uh, another example is sometimes the scalars have units, but the units just multiply together as well. Move down a little bit here. So, for example, if I have a vector r that happens to be 7 meters, its direction is, we'll give it a direction left here, and now I have a scalar, omega, and my scalar is a frequency, so I'll say it's for 1 over seconds. This is a, a frequency. At the moment, it, these terms don't really matter. We're just using it as an example. But this has units of 1 over seconds. Now, I can multiply these two together to give myself a vector, omega r. And now this is equal to the 4, 1 over seconds, the magnitude of the frequency times the 7 meters, the magnitude of the vector, and then uh, the direction stays the same. 
So the resulting vector omega times r is equal to 28 meters per second and it stays in the same direction which is left. So the scalar and the magnitude of the vector can have units but the procedure is still the same. You multiply the magnitudes and the uh, uh, vector stays in the same direction. Okay, now let us consider the case where we have c is equal to negative 1. In this case, the magnitude of the vector stays the same, but the direction changes. So if I have a vector a pointing in that direction and multiply it by negative 1, negative 1 times a, that gives me a vector of the same length in the opposite direction. We often write negative 1 times the vector a as negative a vector, but that's just multiplying the original vector a by uh, negative 1. So, for example, if I had a vector l, say, that was 20 miles long, representing 20 miles, and it's pointing in the direction north, then minus 1 times L gives me a vector of the same magnitude, 20 miles, and it's in the opposite direction, which in this case would be south. So multiplying by Negative 1 just gives me the same magnitude, changes the direction. So now, let us consider the case where c is some any negative number. c is less than 0. Well, in this case, so I have c times some vector a, and in this case, uh, c is a negative number. I can write that as negative 1 times the absolute value of c, which is a positive number, times the vector a. So then I can apply the rules we already have. So this gives me multiply magnitudes, where the direction stays the same, and then multiply by negative 1, which changes direction. Okay, so let's do an example of this, first graphically and then with some numbers. If I have, here we'll point A off in this direction, then negative 3A is going to be a vector three times as long, so I'll draw a line three times as long, approximately, but then negative one means it points in the opposite direction. As another example, if I have, say, a vector v that's equal to four meters per second, and it's pointed down, we'll give it a direction, we can make any direction we want, then the uh, vector negative one-half v is going to have a magnitude, multiply the magnitudes together, uh, four times one-half is two meters per second, and then the negative changes the direction, and so now it's going up. Okay, so that's the three ways we can multiply by a scalar, looking at positive values of the scalar and the negative, and then utilizing with a, the scalar equal to negative 1. So now we want to look at subtraction. Now before we added vectors, and so now we want to uh, see how do we subtract vectors. So now I have two vectors, a and b, and I want to take their difference, a minus b. Well, how we do that is a minus b 
is equal to a plus minus 1 times b. So in this case, I take the vector b, multiply by minus 1, as we just did, and then use the rules for adding vectors that we did before. Now, so far we've added vectors graphically, and so we'll use that same technique where we take the uh, the tail of the second vector, place it to the tip of first, and then draw the resulting vector. So uh, let's do a couple examples of subtracting them graphically. So let's say I have a vector a that looks like this. Okay, I'm a standard vector a pointing off in that direction. And so now I have a vector b that looks like this. So now I want to uh, subtract these two vectors. So the first thing I do is take b and multiply it by uh, negative 1, which gives me a vector of the same length in the opposite direction. And now I'm going to put a over here. And so now I want to um, I have negative b, and now I need to add a and negative b together. So I take the tip of b, I'm sorry, the tail of b on the tip of a, I translate negative b so that the tail of negative b is on the tip of a, and then I draw the resulting vector here, and this vector is now a minus b. Okay, we can do uh, another example here simply by looking at uh, b minus a. So in this case, okay, so we have b again. Well, I'll redraw b over here. It, it looks like this. And now a looks like this, and so I want minus a, which is a vector of the same length in the opposite direction. That looks like this. And so now I translate the vector a so that the tail, negative, vector negative a, so that the tail of negative a is at the tip of b, and then I draw the resulting vector, which is now b minus a. And so subtracting is just a matter of utilizing our multiplying by a scalar, multiplying by the negative 1, and then our rules for addition again. And you'll see here that a minus b is exactly negative b minus a. It has the same magnitude but pointing in the opposite direction. And that's it for this module.